So just to, to get to the heart of the story here, we're, we're going to the AP, uh, APnews.com. Trump says he and First Lady tested positive for coronavirus. President Donald Trump said early Friday that he and First Lady Melania Trump have tested positive for the coronavirus, a stunning announcement that plunges the country deeper into uncertainty just a month before the presidential election. Trump, who has spent much of the year downplaying the threat of a virus that has killed more than 205,000 Americans, said he and Mrs. Trump were quarantining. The White House physician said the president is expected to continue carrying out his duties without disruption while recovering. So, yeah, you can pretty much be the president uh, by by Zoom meeting, uh, apparently. Yeah, they, obviously they can figure out a way, uh, you know, unless, unless uh, you know, his, his brain is malfunctioning significantly, <laughs> uh, significantly more than normal, I should say. And he has to, you know, temporarily hand over authority to Vice President Pence. But, you know, obviously, got to point out the propaganda to say that the virus has killed more than 205,000 Americans. Um, and and I, I don't want to be one of these people overplaying the statistic that we got 6% from the CDC a couple weeks ago. Remember, only 6% of their reported deaths from Corona were from just Corona. And, you know, if you want to say, well, 94% weren't from Corona, they were with Corona. That's how you can't jump to that. Uh, it, it remains to be seen how many uh, of those deaths were legitimate and with Corona, even as a significant factor. And, if, and I'll sort of you know, I'll give you, yeah, you want to say how deadly is Corona, you know, as a, you know, as, as a bug compared to the flu. Well, if the number is somewhere between 6% and 100%, you know, it's probably closer to 50%, which puts this in the realm of a funky, twice as deadly off-season flu. People don't even think of the flu as deadly. So just got to remind people of that perspective. In order to, to look at the story and, and I think give you what, what I hope is a fair analysis, because, uh, of course, conspiracy theories are abounding in the wake of this news. Uh, the AP, the way they're playing this up, uh, not so sure about this, this commentary here. Still, Trump's diagnosis was sure to have a destabilizing effect in Washington, raising questions about how far the virus had spread through the highest levels of the U.S. government, hours before Trump announced he had contracted the virus, the White House had a top aide who had traveled with him during the week had tested positive. Yep, all right. And the tweet, very direct and, and uh, you know, positive from the president himself was, tonight at Lotus and I tested positive for COVID-19. We will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together. And there are lots of bad jokes out there about, oh, finally. President and the First Lady getting some alone time. Uh, yeah, or feeling people people feeling sorry for Melania. Oh, now you really can't avoid your husband. Uh, but I, I, I don't even I, let, let's let's uh, sidestep some of that worst commentary to get right into the heart of, of what's actually happening here and why. Because if Trump was not experiencing symptoms, yeah, he'd probably hide it. And, and his exposure, I mean, I, I'm looking at this from my perspective of relatively limited public information. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. He has a lot more data available to him than I do. And if he was exposing himself to it, he knew exactly what the risks were. The timing of this is really suspicious. And I have to, I have to give credit to the theories that say... Trump's not even sick. He's just making this up. It's, it's a very reasonable theory with all the dishonesty that, that, that Trump is engaged in, that he would fabricate his own positive test, or that he would just, I mean, he, he doesn't even have to lie. Hold on a second. Bear with me. Technically, he could pull all of this off without lying at all. He could find one of these tests that has the one third false positive rate and just keep taking it until he gets a false positive and then go, oh, I tested positive for Corona. Now, there's a little more to this story in terms of the background that I have to cover uh, because apparently it was it was one of his aides uh, who uh, actually tested positive. And again, could it all be fabricated? Uh, we're talking about Hope Hicks one of most his most trusted and long-serving aides 
who was diagnosed with the virus Thursday. She began feeling mild symptoms during the plane ride home from a rally in Minnesota on Wednesday evening. Now, mild symptoms. What? Re- it's funny, we haven't been talking about what constitutes the latest corona symptoms because they ran through all the being human and experiencing normal life might be a symptom of corona things that they could tick off, right? Remember, now, and, and again, I'm not trying to say that this virus isn't real. I'm just pointing out one of the ways in which it's been overhyped, right? If we have um, a funky off season, a version of the flu that is is, is possibly tw- twice uh, as deadly, then you go, okay, well, what are the symptoms? Well, and there's the, the difficulty breathing, uh, the feeling like glass in the lungs. I, I believe that these are genuinely coronavirus symptoms and it's, it's that kind of thing. But then, well, what goes along with that? Well, anything that sounds like the flu. Headaches, soreness, tiredness, stress, you know, like, okay, stress isn't one of them, but, you know, things that result from the stress of normal, modern American life, runny nose, itchy eyes, you know, anything that could be allergy symptoms, right? All of these things are mild symptoms. It, It wouldn't be difficult for them to basically fabricate this thing. And, and knowingly make this whole thing a lie, even if there is no lie directly in it. You know, it could be they were, they were, this could have been Hope's idea, Hope Hicks's whole idea, like, Mr. President, I'm going to tell you that I am experiencing mild symptoms. And then the doctor on board here is going to diagnose me with COVID. And then you and Melania are going to take tests until you pull up a random false positive. And then you're going to come out of this in a week and you're going to test negative and you're going to come out strong and you're going to be able to reassure the nation that even as an old man, you were able to defeat this virus. Now, there's there, there's some problems with this theory. And the first one is that there's a significant thread in the propaganda out there that says you can re get the virus, that either it mutates and you get another version of it and you're somehow vulnerable to it. Or the virus stays with you and re-manifests and gives you symptoms again that make you uh, make you contagious. Now, if President Trump comes out and says, I'm better now, I, and I've wondered about this for myself because I got out there at the beginning, I was like, this is no big deal. And I've been living like fully exposed, no symptoms, nothing. And I did take a test. <coughs> I got one of the, <coughs> oh, excuse me, <coughs> it's, it's, it's just a little touch of the Rona this morning. Um, I took a test and I, I tested negative for antibodies and for active viruses. But if you tested, if you test positive for antibodies, but not for active viruses, are they going to say from now on, like when the lockdown lifts, perhaps, or we get onto whatever the new normal is going to be? Well, if you've had the virus ever before, you're now like a leper and, and you you have to go live in a in a quarantine colony you have to you have to basically quarantine for the rest of your life and if and, and and now if trump has significant data to prove that that's not a thing although there is i think you know and we know from uh, from our friend mercedes who believes that she is is at uh three separate bouts with this although uh, i don't think she had access to testing to like test the negative in between with the president, there's going to be no excuse, right, for him. I, I think he's going to be ta- he's going to have to talk about his story. Um, you know, I mean, of course, yeah, the Trump administration has a great record of just lying, hiding, and and covering things up. So I'm not I'm not saying that like they have to be honest, but I think they're going to have to talk about it. Yes, he's positive today. Yes, he's positive today. No, no, he tested negative. Uh, we're going to wait a day. Oh, he tested negative two days in a row. We're confident he's negative now. But then, are you are people going to be able to or, or willing? Uh, to go shake hands with people who they know have tested positive in the past. So follow-up story uh, with, with with this, because I do think this, this fits into sort of a, a desperation that Trump is feeling going into the home stretch of the election. And maybe this was, uh, maybe he thought that, that this was his ace in the hole, that faking Corona and, and getting over it in a week and, you know, not even having to quarantine. I mean, there's a month, it's a month, as of today, a month and a day to, to election day. This is, this is hugely significant in the timing, but there's one other, there's, there are a couple 
uh, a few actually related stories that I have to cover uh, about the home stretch of the election that, that all do kind of relate to Trump's uh, last minute strategy here, which obviously has something to do with catching Corona. And maybe there's like, you know, and I, I got to hand it to Trump for being uh, a little older and wiser and perhaps more clever than I. Certainly for being better supplied with data. Now, capable of acting on that and speaking eloquently and consistently, I don't know, because he seems to be walking through a big pile of shit called the Proud Boys right now. I don't want to call them a pile of shit. That's not what I meant. <laughs> no, but obviously around this, uh, all this kafefi around the recent white supremacists question and the debate and the mentioning of Proud Boys by Chris Wallace, uh, it, 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 so I wonder, like, it, this back, this clumsiness in messaging is not because Trump has great data. However, I wouldn't be surprised if he has some way that he's able to calculate what's the sympathy vote for me and Melania stuck in quarantine, bravely battling through Corona. Like, if, if, I, I'm I'm going to be, yeah, like, key, I'm, I'm going to be watching this closely. But here's where Trump is certainly fucked up. And this is, it does make this exciting to watch as a contest, at least from a distance. He was asked in the debate by Chris Wallace, will you condemn white supremacists, militias, and like the Proud Boys? And the, the, the verbal connection wasn't really clear to say that they're all white supremacists. But then Trump went on Hannity. This is from TheHill.com. Trump, quote, I condemn all white supremacists. Now, he said this a number of times, but here's the exact quote. I've said it many times, and let me be clear again. I condemn the Ku Klux Klan. I condemn all white supremacists. I condemn the Proud Boys. I don't know much about the Proud Boys, almost nothing, but I condemn that. This is after, remember, he said, stand back and stand by to them at the debate. Now, there's, there's just... Now, this has actually got his base, people who don't even identify as Proud Boys, very upset. I've seen uh, my, my, my friend Cassandra Fairbanks tweeting about this, dismayed, dismayed, and disappointed with President Trump. And there, there, is a, there, there, there are two, made, two glaring, glaring problems with Trump's messaging on this. One the contradiction from the debate to last night on Hannity calling in saying, I condemn the Proud Boys. Really? After saying, I'm not going to condemn them and loop and because I think he did kind of a clever thing, you know, as he often seems to do by accident, by verbal slips, by, by his awkward habits of putting sentences together. He, 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 he didn't let, the Proud Boys be grouped in with the white supremacists, but here he doesn't separate them. He just says, I condemn the Proud Boys. And so there's that flip-flop of throwing a major enthusiastic part of your base under the bus. And to any Proud, like Enrique, come on the show, man. I want to talk to you. I've been, I've, we've been trying to get you on the show for months now. I'm talking about the head of the Proud Boys. And they're they're very libertarian, not not categorically, not they're not libertarian, but they're very close. And and I think this experience that a lot of the Proud Boys are going through right now might be the ultimate chance to get them to defect to, to libertarianism to consider what are the problems with your ideology. If your ideology leads you to support someone who can so easily throw you under the bus, why? And and the thing is, I, the Proud Boys I might describe as a kind of libertarian nationalist, and yes, that is a contradiction. Um, but sort of maybe more precisely, libertarianism inclined nationalist. And if they just drop the nationalism and see the the universality of the of the human family, and that even the the progress of Western civilization depends on the continuing advance, not the conservation of these ideas or current institutions of society as conservatism describes in its definition, 
but that you can look at universal principles and see a better way of moving humanity forward based on the values that we do share. And I've been more tempted than ever to join the Proud Boys, although I don't share their fundamental, uh, you know, uh, raison d'être, uh, 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 you know, of nationalism. I, I'm, I see them very much as allies. And I, when I see stories like this next one, WashingtonTimes.com, Proud Boys, Black Lives Matter leaders hold joint conference. We denounce white supremacy. And this isn't the first time this has happened. There have been, you know, Boogaloo and Black Lives Matter joint 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 events. And this isn't the first time Proud Boys have got out and and protected Black Lives Matter activists and say, you know, we are we are not white supremacists. We are we are not racist. And and I would think they'd even say that we are anti-racism, not in the Marxist definition, but just the literal meaning that they are anti-racism. Um, you know, they are, they are led by, um, you know, a lot of minorities in their national leadership and in their local chapters. So like, this is, um, you know, it, it, it should tell you something when, when you see a group, um, so slandered by the mainstream media. And again, uh, the, the, International chairman, that's his title, uh, of the Proud Boys, Enrique Tario, is uh, a black Hispanic. And you go, what the fuck? Really? You're trying to tell me that this group is white supremacist? And, you know, someone in the Producers Club showed uh, showed us a link about Gavin, uh, Gavin McInnes, uh, who I've interviewed and or been interviewed by. Um, I guess we should get him on the show, too. Uh, yeah, Gavin, if you ever get a chance to watch this, we'd love to have you on. Uh, but but to hear Gavin now, like, as a co-founder of the Proud Boys, uh, Vice, he was also sorry, co-founder of Vice, um, and I guess founder of, of Proud Boys, uh, to see the way that he gets slandered and misrepresented in the media, you go, yeah, maybe this is a diversion of, you know, how they're censoring and, and shadow banning libertarians by making it look like the problem is censoring conservatives. Uh, but in this case, these guys are so close to libertarian. I think they, they, they are being censored and slandered and misrepresented, not just as a political football, but uh, because their message is a threat because the, the, the message uh, of Gavin McInnes, of Enrique Tario, of the proud boys uh, of the Boogaloo movement, you know, these are a threat to the establishment. And, you know, I think keeping an eye on that is uh, is really important as we see this misinformation. I know this is going to be a bit of a long composite opening second segment. We've got just a couple stories I got to wrap in here from the Daily Beast.com, right wing Trumpist news site busted as Putin troll farm operation. It's the latest evidence that the Kremlin isn't just supporting Trump. It's trying to sow as much chaos as possible in the weeks ahead of Election Day. And there. Uh, was the story we brought you yesterday about China's, the, the one I just mentioned in, in censorship that's now demonetized, China's long game in the propaganda war around Corona and how they try, how, basically how they exported their, you know, strict lockdown measures. Um, you know, by the way, I, I guess this is, is, is also even more of a side story, but related to this, the Jerusalem Post, jpost.com, Netanyahu of coronavirus lockdown doesn't work, we'll make it stricter. What? What? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, this is this is how government works. You know, it's like to a kid with a hammer, every problem looks like a nail when you're trying to solve problems with people and you're just beating people down. You go, oh, well, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Really? I don't even have to read this story. The headline says it all. If coronavirus lockdown doesn't work, we'll make it stricter. So, but, but back to this story about the, the troll farm, because there was so much in the story that we didn't even get to from uh, tabletmag.com about uh, the Chinese propaganda effort around corona like thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of fake Twitter accounts exposed. You got to be a conscientious consumer of information. You can't. And the thing is, what they're doing is they're bullying politicians. 
into into different policy. There, there was a uh, you know like um, Christy Nome, not to sing this tyrant's praises, but she did one right thing in resisting lockdowns, and her Twitter was swarmed with accounts saying uh, that she's she's part of a genocide. She's killing people by not locking down the state of South Dakota. And you go, where's this coming from? You know, there's a massive Chinese propaganda effort to get people to support lockdowns. So, you know, just question everything. Things are going to get really interesting in, in this last month of the debate. It's, it's an honor and, and, and a pleasure to be uh, anchoring the Internet seven days a week with you talking about this because it, it's going to get crazy. We're like, we used to talk about the October surprise, like there's going to be this one leaked tape or this one revealing news story or this one breaking investigation. And now it says, boom, boom like starting mid September, boom, 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 boom. October surprise after October surprise. I guess they got to, they got to ramp it way up for 2020. Just crank up the propaganda. And so this one last story, I'm going to wrap into this, this composite opening segment here from media. I, cause this is something that would be an October surprise any other year. This year, it, it's barely going to be a blip in the 24-hour news cycle. Leaked calls reveal Melania Trump's private war on Christmas. Who gives a fuck about the Christmas stuff? You know, I like I don't even care to get I, if, if this was the headline, like the only October surprise. I might get into this. I might I might look into the story. <laughs> like I might <laughs> I might care enough. Um, I'm looking at some of these quotes. Um, it sounds like she just doesn't care about the ceremony and being first lady of Christmas. Like I quote, I'm working my ass off on the Christmas stuff that, you know, who gives a fuck about the Christmas stuff and decorations, but I need to do it. Right. You know, and it's, it's funny, a little irony about the war on Christmas, silly side of the culture war. No one's looking that far ahead. I shouldn't say nobody. The White House is obviously planning for Christmas. Melania is planning for Christmas. And in the current shitstorm of Decision 2020, just another fart in the wind. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Thanks, to, thanks to everybody in the Producers Club who, who sponsors this show and makes it possible. And everybody who goes to CigarFederation.com to use our promo code ADAM10, A-D-A-M, all caps, one zero, gets you 10% off your order there. 